folks, what I'm about to show you in this video is going to be very, very important because whether you care about this stock we're going to talk about in this video or not, this is going to be highly relevant to stocks you personally own or you will own in the future. And we're talking about stocks that are heavily shorted. And uh, what I just witnessed here after hours is, uh, you know, borderline uh, pure evil. Some people would say, isn't this like straight up manipulation of the stock price after hours? And uh, there's certainly debates to be made, okay? Uh, but what I'm gonna show you is something that is almost impossible to prove, but when you start putting the pieces together, you start to very quickly realize, oh my gosh, like this is like uh, some, some pure uh, evil activity. And this is why another one of those reasons why it makes it so hard to do any short-term moves in a stock, okay? So Corsair Gaming, if you didn't know, is one of the most heavily shorted stocks in the entire stock market. About 30% of its float is short, which is heavily, heavily shorted. Anytime you're in anything over 10% short is uh, pretty heavy. If you're over 20%, it's, you know, you're way up there. And if you're over 30%, you're in insane levels of, of shorting activity, right? And so we know there's a crazy amount of people that are short selling Corsair gaming, right? And they'll have their reasons or not their reasons, whatever. You know, I think a lot of folks look at these as kind of like retail trader names, easy stocks to shake the retail traders out of, right? Or investors, retail investors, traders, whatever. Um, you know, uh, it's especially if people don't have experience in the market, they see a stock price going down and they start to get frustrated. They sell, they make bad decisions. And, and that's kind of what happens, right? And so... Corsair, Corsair earnings come out after uh, the bell, essentially. And what are the earnings? Well, Corsair basically beat on revenue. They came in at 510 mil. They easily beat the 495 mil that was expected. They came in at 35 cents EPS, which beat expectations of basically expectations of 25 cents. So they crushed it on EPS. And they had a very nice beat on revenue, okay? So that's good, good news. That's really good news, especially for a stock like Corsair Gaming, which has had a lot of bad news baked into it. So the fact that they come in with beat and beat, and a lot of people figure, if anything, like a lot of people thought Corsair was going to miss on revenue and miss on EPS because we know a lot of the smaller companies uh, have had some troubles dealing with inflation and all the costs of everything going up, right? And so you're looking at that and you're like, okay, th this is pretty good. Um, anything else here? Well, yeah, there's something else. Guidance. Guidance is always very, very important. Is this a massive miss here as far as guidance goes? Well, no, it is not. That is right in a line. It's actually just slightly above what analysts were expecting. Analysts had midpoint of $1.99 billion for Corsair Gaming to do, essentially, as far as their revenue goes in 22 and the company guided for 1.9 to 2.1 which is once again the midpoints 2 billion so that's just over what analysts was ex expecting so here we are in the situation where corsair gaming beat nicely on revenue beat huge on eps and it looks like their guidance is slightly better than what analysts were expecting and the stock price is obviously beaten down through the floor the valuation is very low and so in the situation you would assume Probably a pretty, you know, positive stock price reaction, right? Especially when you consider the fact that this stock's trading at a 15, 15 trailing P. Uh, uh, Yahoo Finance has them at 11 forward P and a price to sales ratio of under one for this company, which is just ridiculous to even think about, right? So it, with the valuation being down the way it is and the stock price being beaten down the way it is, right? And coming in with those great numbers, you'd expect the, the stock price to react positively, right? And sure enough, it does. It reacts positively. There it goes, right? I took this picture here. I was like, I got to see, you know, uh, I'm going to track this all after hours and see what's going on. So I just took this picture with my phone real quick here. And uh, yeah, nice, uh, up over 6%. And so after hours trading, it's, it's going pretty well, right? Stock's trading back and forth, but it, it's overall nicely positive, right? And then suddenly... Out of nowhere, out of nowhere, the stock price tanks. Numbers had already been out for quite a while at this point. Um, everything was known. Uh, the, the stock price reaction was really good. And in a matter of 60 seconds, the stock price goes from up 6% or so to all of a sudden it was trading down to 11%, 12%. In a matter of a minute, and it was like, what just happened? Who just dumped a massive amount of shares on, on the market? It was like, why did this stock just tank to the floor, right? Now, after hours, it came back and came back. So it showed strength after hours in terms of right after the earnings came out. It also showed strength after suddenly massive amount of shares were dumped on the market, right? So twice the stock showed a strength, but 
suddenly, you know, the, the stock price momentum got completely destroyed, essentially. And what you're going to see here, and I'm not a big one into the technicals and the charts, and let, if I'm pulling up something like this, it has to be some big crap that happened. Let's just put it that way, because you know I usually don't care about the candles or any of this stuff. So for me to pull this up, something big had to happen, and something big did happen. Somebody just dumped a whole bunch of shares on the market all within like a minute, just boom, sell. And um, for what reason? What reason? Everything's good. Everything's great. Everything's better than expected. The stock's being down. There's no way along saw those numbers and were like, oh, I'm out of, I'm out of Corsair Gaming. No, no, no. Especially when the stock price had been moving up. It was showing nice momentum. The valuations like ridiculously low. All the numbers were beat. And suddenly just somebody just throws a massive amount of shares on the market. So many shares that, you know, after hours, you know, couldn't even recoup it essentially. Okay, that's a little fishy, right? And once again, the stock showed resilience coming out of that big dump of shares all of a sudden that happened. See, here's what you can do. If you're a short seller, right? Let's say you're shorting a stock to the max, like a Corsair Gaming. Let's say uh, you got $15 million short position on the stock, for instance, right? You're short $15 million worth of shares. Well, you could easily buy a half million dollars or a million dollars worth of shares and the reason you own those shares is not really to hedge your position at all. The reason you own those shares is so if there's any big price momentum going on in the stock, right, especially after hours where there aren't as many shares traded in a stock like Corsair Gaming because it's a smaller company, right? We're talking about, you know, a $2 billion or under a $2 billion market cap. It's a small cap company, right? You could easily kill price momentum by dumping, you know, let's say... 30,000, 50,000, 80,000 shares all at once in the market, and there's not going to be enough buyers there to buy it up essentially, right? And so you get this um, massive just kind of flood out there. So what was seen as a good earnings report, positive, the stock was being bought up. All of a sudden, if you're a short seller, you throw those shares on the market, no one can buy it up fast enough, and it tanks down the stock price, and it kills, it completely kills that entire move upward in the stock price in a matter of a minute. In a matter of a minute, that entire momentum can be completely destroyed, okay? And all of a sudden, suddenly, the good earnings report, the beats, and all that doesn't matter because somebody, maybe a short seller, probably a short seller, because like I said, from the long perspective, there's no reason to have sold out, uh, you know, especially all at once like that. Like, you don't do that. If it's long, you're going to go into this like, you know, there's positive price momentum, I'll cash out of some shares here and there. You don't just dump all your shares at one moment for no reason. But somebody went ahead and did that. And like I said, if you're a short seller, it makes a lot of sense to just hold some shares around and then go ahead and hey, I'm going to kill this entire momentum. All of a sudden, people start second-guessing themselves, thinking, oh, man, maybe I should sell as well, or maybe I shouldn't buy the stock because now there's no price momentum there, right? And you you take the vibe from being, that's a good quarterly report. Wow, they beat on revenue. They beat an EPS. They, they're they guiding a little better than what analysts were expected. And now all of a sudden, it's like, oh, the stock price is down. And they tried to really kill it, right? I mean, that stock price, like I said, went all the way down to down 12%. Because they flooded so many shares out there in a matter of a minute. They flooded that many shares out there. And with a stock, you know, like Corsair, that's not going to be heavily traded, it makes it difficult, right? If this was Apple stock, it's a different scenario. You can't really kill it like that. The momentum. And the reason being is Apple's too big. It, even if you're a big short seller, you're still not going to kill the price momentum in a stock like that. With Corsair Gaming, it's rather, I don't want to say it's easy, but it's not super hard to kill the price momentum if you don't want that stock to go up. And you don't want to all of a sudden see it going to 21, 22, 23. And look at what the stock was doing. It was doing very, very well. They figured, let's kill this baby before all of a sudden it ends up going up 15%, 20%, 25%. And all of a sudden the shorts end up having to be in a short squeeze situation, right? And all of a sudden when the shorts start getting squeezed, that's when you can see some epic moves. Look at Snapchat last week when that one made a 58% move. And so the shorts always have some things kind of in the back of their pocket. And this is why... You know, it's almost impossible if you're trying to play these things from a short-term perspective. And I learned this lesson many, many years ago because the short sellers are, they got a lot of tricks up their sleeve and they won't win over the long term, but they can win these short-term battles because they got all these tricks up their sleeve. And if it means that they're going to buy some shares and uh, all of a sudden dump those shares, if there's some price momentum, they're going to go ahead and do that essentially, right? 
And so it just makes it so tough to battle with these guys. And that's why I try not to play any short-term options or short-term trades or anything like that. Because it's just, you got to realize who you're going against. And, um, you know, they got a lot of firepower on the other side. And, and to try to beat them in the short term is, is almost impossible, right? So... As far as where the stock's uh, ending up here at the end of uh, trading after hours, uh, about a 4% move or so. So, you know, not not horrible, um, but also not the up 6% or maybe it would have gone up 10% or 20%. We'll never know if it wasn't for that, that flood of shares all of a sudden out there in a, in a sudden moment out of nowhere. We'll never know where this one actually traded out at. And so tomorrow will be interesting to see what happens with the stock price when the actual market's open. Because we know in the actual market, that's where especially retail investors like to make their moves, right? And that's where usually a lot of longs like to make their moves. Now, some people got shares in the after hours for $18 and I don't know, 15 cents or $18 and 20 cents. Uh, good for those folks. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's part of the game. And you might say, well, is that, is that legal? Yeah, that's perfectly legal. There's nothing, you know, uh, anybody could do about that. If you want to short sell a stock like that and also, you know, buy a good chunk of shares and dump them on the market after hours to kill price momentum, there's technically nothing illegal with that. And um, I know that frustrates a lot of people, but it's what happens. And, um, you know, with, with companies like that, they have to deal with that. And so it ends up leaving a sour taste in a lot of people's uh, mouths, essentially, where they're like, oh, why they beat earnings? They did so good. The valuation's so low. And the stock price went down 4%. It's what ends up happening is just what you have to do, deal with in the short term. Now, for long-term investors, this is the best situation possible, right? Because as a long-term investor, you're focused on the next three, five, seven years. And, you know, short sellers, they, they can only play these games for so long, essentially. And so over the next three, five, seven years, if Corsair does well and it's a $60, $80 stock, it doesn't really matter to you and you can buy shares for cheaper, right? But for anybody playing it from a short-term perspective, short-term call options and things like that, or just short-term trading, you know, this type of activity can be ultra frustrating. And there's really nothing anybody can, can do about it in the end in this situation, right? In terms of Corsair, I haven't got a chance to listen to their earnings call yet, so I'm going to listen to that whenever we get that on the Hungry Bull. If we don't have it up by tonight, I'll just listen to it on the Investor Relations page, uh, essentially. I'm very excited to hear that from what I heard. The conference call went really well. People are really, really excited uh, overall. But yeah, nonetheless, guys, uh, that's the moral of the story. And if you ever own highly shorted stocks, be ready for the shorts to play a whole lot of games, okay? That's just the way it is. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, we got a massive deal coming up for the private stock group, Financial Fortress. Make sure you take advantage of that. If you want the deal as soon as it drops, check out pinned comment down there. And uh, also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Thanks for joining me. We talk stocks in the market all the time, baby. Much love and have a great day.